Hey everyone and welcome to the YouTube channel Light Sirens Action. Today you have tuned in on a Medication Monday. And if you don't already know what Medication Monday is, what the heck? Where have you been? Just kidding guys, but with that being said, I am going to explain to you what my goal is with Medication Monday. Basically I want to highlight a different EMS drug that we administer out in the field every single Monday. Some days I want it to be a basic drug, some days I want it to be intermediate, and some days paramedic. I would have loved something like this while I was in EMT school because I was encouraged to make note cards, but I found it really difficult to create these note cards in order to better understand my pharmacology because the information was so scattered all over. So I've really worked on created a, creating a more centralized location for you guys to get your information. So I hope this helps, and I hope this helps with your studying. Sit back, relax, and I hope you learn something. All right, today we're going to be going over hydroxocobalamin. Hydroxocobalamin is also known as cyanokit. Cyanokit is going to fall under the drug class of antidotes, specifically a cyanide antidote. And hydroxocobalamin is actually under the vitamin class as well because it is a form of vitamin B12. So your mechanism of action, simply put for this note card, is that it binds with the cyanide and it creates a non-toxic cyanocobalamin. This allows the cells to once again use oxygen to function. But I want to go a little more in depth on that. Basically, when cyanide enters the human body, it searches for our cells. And once it gets to our cells, it binds with the mitochondria of the cells. This prevents the oxygen molecules from getting into the cells. Essentially, the cells are starving of oxygen. This creates anaerobic metabolism, which makes lactic acid build up. And when the lactic acid builds up, then it sends the body into metabolic acidosis, and the cells essentially die. So with hydroxocobalamin, it enters the body and it binds with that cyanide, and then it is excreted renally or it's urinated out by the person. And that's essentially how it works. So your indications suspected cyanide poisoning, and also suspected smoke inhalation. So with suspected cyanide poisoning, you're going to be seeing fast heart rate, dizziness, maybe cardiac arrest, um, loss of consciousness, uh, difficulty breathing. With your suspected smoke inhalations, you may see soot around the mouth, burns, or burns in the mouth. As always with your dosages, abide by your local protocol. Your dose is going to be 5 grams IV or IO over 15 to 30 minutes. And your pediatric dose is going to be 70 milligrams per kilogram IV or IO as well. Okay, a few more things on hydroxocobalamin. So your contraindications, and I always think this is so silly or funny when I see it, but it's going to be known hypersensitivity. But if you've never taken the drug or ever been given the drug, how are you going to know that you're hypersensitive? But I'll just say, if you've ever had a rare anaphylactic reaction to this drug, I would imagine you probably wouldn't want to take it again. So your adverse reactions are obviously that rare anaphylactic reaction and also transient hypertension. And you can expect to see that after the administration of the drug. A special note to remember is that you can expect temporary discoloration of the mucous membranes and the skin. It is supplied in 5 grams in 250 ml vials, and it's like a kit. So it comes with your sterile infusion set and your transfer spike. So with your drug interactions, you cannot administer hydroxocobalamin through the same line as dobutamine, diazepam, dopamine, nitro, fentanyl, propofol, sodium nitrite, and sodium thiosulfate. And honestly, that is a lot of drugs to remember to not give through the same line. So my, my suggestion to you would be if you need to give these drugs to make sure and grab a second line. And last but not least, a couple of side notes on hydroxocobalamin. Your peak effect for this drug is going to be between 8 to 10 minutes. So hopefully you start to see improvement within your patient during this time period. Also, it is excreted renally, 
and red colored urine can be expected. Just like I mentioned in our special notes, the skin discoloration and the mucous membrane discoloration, you can expect red colored urine as well. When administering this medication, you cannot give it in conjunction with the drugs that I mentioned in the previous slide, and that is mainly because there have been reported cases of particle formation in the IV line itself, and as we all know, that is a danger and a hazard to our patients, so make sure you start a second line if you're going to get those drugs. Cyanokit is a pregnancy class C drug, and it is only recommended in pregnant women if the possible benefit justifies the possible risk to an unborn baby. With hydroxocobalamin, you can expect hypertension, and I'm talking hypertension where your systolic number is going above 180, but doctors say that within four hours, in most cases, that this returns back to normal. As always, please remember to abide by your local protocol and scope of practice. Just because I can do it doesn't mean you can do it. And this is purely for informational for those in the EMS field and if you are completing your drug cards. It is not to be used with in place of local protocol. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I appreciate all your love and support, and we'll talk to you later. Bye!